Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Now, I know I normally do the best decks for the qualifier play-ins. Uh, I'd missed the one for Historic Best of One. We had a bit of an emergency here. My dog fell down the stairs and sprained her leg really bad. So spent most of the day at the vet. Uh, a lot of money, a lot of time and stress. She's doing all right right now, but a lot of attention there. So I'm actually gonna cover a bunch of deck lists outside of just like, is it Wizards? That did well and got six wins. Um, so I curated a list off my Twitter, so I'll link them there, but I'll paste all the deck lists as well. Uh, so the original content creators. If you want to see who did it or just the players themselves, it's on my Twitter. But we're gonna jump into it. Um, I'm not gonna do timestamps on this, I'm just trying to just get the information out. Normally I will do timestamps. We'll be back for best decks in standard and everything starting later in the week once the set releases. But deck lists will be here if you just want to skim to the deck list, they're in the body of the content but we have about eight decks today to cover so i'm going to start off with the spiciest deck of the weekend multiple players were getting the six wins and qualifying in the historic best of one with get this 16 land ley line combo so how does this deck works you're playing just a bunch of ley lines ley lines are free cast from your opening hand so you have hexproof flash exile graveyards they target your stuff they take two damage and then Classic Ley Line of Lightning. Um, whenever you cast a spell, you can pay one and then deal a damage to the player or Planeswalkers. So the whole kind of intent of the deck, and you want to do it like aggressively mulligan, upwards to three cards, where you have one land, one Ley Line, and then Fragment Reality. So what you do is you Fragment Reality, one of your Ley Lines, and then it always hits Geist of St. Traff. So this card at one point in original Innistrad was like 40, 50 bucks. It was one of the chase cards. Uh, there was like Standard decks, Bant, uh, like Aura, Bant Boggles. I think it played Modern Play as well at the time, but very powerful card that's now like two bucks. I remember cracking boxes of Innistrad to try to get like uh, Liliana's, and I kept drawing these, so easy trade. Uh, so when it attacks, you create a 4 4 Angel that's tapped and flying, and then uh, tapped and attacking, and then you exile it at the end of the turn. And then from there, you just kind of put boots. So it's kind of like an Aura's deck. You got Ethereal Armor. Griff's Boom for flying, Arcane Flight for flying, Combat Research for card advantage, and then Slip Out the Back for protection. The Slip Out the Back can also target the Angel token on your end step. Uh, so you do it before it gets exiled, so then it just phases out, and then you get it still in play. So that's kind of the combo. It's like cheeky wins that you kind of sneak out the wins that way there. So, next deck. And some of these I just don't have the cards for. <laughs> so you're seeing them in the deck builder like this. So this one was one that I did not think would do, but got the set six wins and qualified. This is Mono Red Ponza. So Ponza is generally land destruction. So you have your Stone Rains, you have your Crucible of Worlds, you can Ghost Quarter, Field of Ruin your opponent, try to take them off all their lands. And then this deck's, I think, just preying on the fact that there is a lot of cheap removal for a lot of the aggressive decks. So if you're playing Wizards, you have Fiery Impulse, Strangles, Abrades, Molten Impacts to hit all their creatures. Bloodthirsty can flash it back along with Stone Rain. Similarly, Goblin Dark Dwellers can also flash back uh, your Stone Rains or any of your removal. Fables, Bone Crusher Giants mixed in, Cleansing Wildfire. Uh, sometimes you'll see this played in a deck where you have indestructible lands and you target your own land for ramp. In this deck, it's just blowing up your opponent's lands. So eight pieces of uh, land destruction. So this one's just looking to take out all your opponent's lands and then just win with incidental creatures kind of mixed into the mix. Moving on, we have Enchantress. So this is another list. Uh, so the Enchanting Tales gave us some new cards. This is a prison lock deck. So Solemnity and either nine lives or Phyrexian Unlife means you cannot take damage. Um, you can still lose life, uh, and then that gets it through. Um, loss of life uh, is not damaged, so things like Cauldron Familiar, Croxa, stuff of that nature. Notably as well, Stomp prevents damage prevention, so that get, breaks the lock as well. But other than that, you can lock your opponent against like Wizards, stuff like that. They can't actually deal damage. You have your Enchantress Package, which is Sithis, as well as Enchantress Presence. Whenever you cast an enchantment, you draw a card. And then you just have like ramp, like an Utopia Sprawl ramps you, Baffling in, Ossification as removal, uh, Sanctum Weaver can generate a lot of mana, the Sterling Grove gives your stuff Shroud, as well as the Greater Oromancy, so you can just kind of protect all your permanents, 
and then with generating a whole bunch of mana you can use destiny spinner to animate lands based on the number of enchantments hallowed haunting makes tokens and approach the second sun as your other win condition then we we have kethys so kethys is a deck you see a lot more in best of three this version is kind of all in kethys combo We've seen some with like Agatha Soul Cauldron, um, a higher like creature density. This one here is using stuff like Otherworldly Gaze, so it's really just about filling your graveyard as quick as possible using Kethys um, to discount. And basically, what you do is with Jace, you keep milling yourself, you loop Mox Ambers to generate the mana to cast Jace over and over, mill yourself over, and then eventually cast Jace Wielder of Mysteries to draw a card and win, or you could then basically get to a point where you can cast Jace so many times afterwards that you can mill out your opponent. Um, you have all these channel lands, so you'll notice 4 Ottawara, 3 Takanuma, uh, 3 Baseju, because Kethis just cares about legendaries being exiled, so you can exile the lands. Kinnon doubles the mana off things like Mox Amber, Rona lets you draw a discard, uh, so you can kind of fill your graveyard that way there. Chromatic Spear is another way to kind of get ahead on mana. Emery lets you recast artifacts from your graveyard, and then this version is playing some Fatal Pushes in the main, just to be a little bit more interactive, because the Wizard matchup is, from what I understand, a tough matchup, so having some interaction main also helps. Um, so we got Kethys, we got that, we got that, we got that, then we got Boros Thopters. So the Thopters list, um, this was a popular deck, then Bowmaster basically invalidated it, similar like the next deck we cover, Humans. Um, but it's back, kind of the innovation or the newer card that we're seeing in it is Shrapnel Blast. Uh, just another way to kind of have an effect where you sacrifice an artifact, deal 5 damage to any target. This can go face, can also be used for removal. Uh, an additional copy of Glass Casket. So fewer copies of just like uh, Barb Spike in here, playing a little bit more to the board with Glass Caskets, Portable Holes, Shrapnel Blast. Just more ways to interact, like if you want to hit their wizard, stuff like that. Um, but the big kind of core of the deck is make a big creature or multiple 4-4s. With Retrofitter Foundry, sacrificing your Thopters with things like Ornithopter, stuff like that. And then Mashiko powers up your creature, give him Trample Lifelink, or just smack in the face with an Evasive Flyer, kind of win from that range. Um, Sunbay Canyon is a land that came into play, like came into the effect from the last set, so just another way to get some card advantage into your mana base. Luris Companion lets you recast this. Up. Then moving on, we got humans, mono white humans. Um, so we've seen black white humans, we've seen Abzan, uh, there's like a four or five color. Notably, the big card, Cavern of Souls, will be coming into the format. So another card that makes all these humans encounterable should give a boost to um, like tribal style strategies. Uh, this list here is leveraging Ranger Captain of Eos, which lets you tutor for one drops. So you'll notice a lot of situational one drops. Uh, Dauntless Bodyguard gives protection, or sorry, gives indestructible. We have Giant Killer in here. We have Hopeful Initiate um, as kind of one of tutors. Recruitment Officers in there, Esper Sentinels. Giver of Ruins is a card you can also potentially play depending on the matchup. Gives you another um, protection style element as a 1-2. We've seen that get played from time to time, so it's another card if you want to substitute it in for some numbers. You have your Copper Coat Vanguards for Lord Effects as well as Ward. Thalia's Tax, Thalia's Lieutenant puts counters on your board, Brutal Cathar's Removal, Adeline to go wide, and then Inquisitor Captain helps you find more creatures. A lot of utility lines in this list for Mutavaults, Ganjos, Caves, Arden Veils, really just looking to have a bunch of things if you do flood out to use your mana on. Then we go to Merfolk, and this one's a really interesting build of Merfolk. So we still have all the collective package, but we don't have like the Simic Lord in there. Uh, Sylvian's kind of the big payoff, lets you draw cards, gives your, it becomes indestructible, and gives your other Merfolk's ward. Mirror Edry lets you tap, untap, plays really nicely with flash style effects. You can tap their creatures, like in the combat step. Trickster taps down and removes their abilities. Master Pearl Trident is a lord that also gives island walk, so that your creatures become unblockable. If your opponent has an island, Voldalian Hexcatcher is a lord that also lets you sacrifice your merfolk so it's counter non-creature spells unless they pay one so four spike on all your creatures silver gill adept lets you draw cards shoreline scout lets is either a way to transform one of your lands to tropical island 
or it just is a 1-1 one -one that gets bigger if you control an island or a merfolk for the turn, like if it comes into play. And then the Miscaller comes into play, uh, basically you could sacrifice it, and it kind of invalidates anything like uh, Kethis combo, stuff coming back from the graveyard. If it's like creatures, it could do any of the dredge decks, any collector companies, anything like that, you can exile it instead. But kind of the interesting thing is just the more interactive package. You have full four royal treatments for hexproof, and then they also get the royal, uh, one one and ward, and then savage swipe, which is it's a fight spell that sees a lot of play in these merfolk decks because your creatures are usually smaller. So it gives your creature plus two two until end of turn if its power is two, and then it fights target creature you don't control. So kind of a boost. Otherwise, your creatures are usually understated. Full form muta vault in the mana base, uh, and then a couple copies of Ottawara mixed in. And then lastly, we have Jeskai Opus, Magma Opus, deck at times was popular, some variations, but kind of the core of the deck is it's like a Jeskai control deck where you're trying to put cards into your graveyard. Uh, Prismari can do that, Elorian, but the big thing is you discard the Magma Opus and then either cast it for reduced cost or like free with the Torrential Gearhawk or Mizzix Mastery to get some value. Uh, otherwise, you're just playing an interactive deck. Snapcaster Mage can also flashback stuff, uh, change the equation, fragments, divine purges, just a lot of interaction. Lightning Helix really good against the Wizards deck. Expressive Iteration for card advantage, Memory Deluge. You have Lorien Revealed, which can be cycled early, uh, and then flashback late if you want. Otherwise, just a card drop. But kind of like a Just Guy Control that has a potential turn three Magma Opus, which can. Provide a lot of card advantage, just kill things, tap things, make you a 4-4, provide a lot of utility in that respect. So that's it. We covered about 12 minutes. Um, I went a little faster again. Apologies. It's a little hectic right now. Um, but let me know what you think, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.